One could say Platinum Ticket started out as a dream horse. I remember the horse, a big, good-looking gray horse, had a lot of fun with the horse, cool horse. The thoroughbred gelding excelled at the racetrack. What we call it in horse racing, he was going up the ladder. So he was a horse that was on his way up. After a lifetime purse of $84,000, Platinum Ticket retired from the track to start a second career in the show ring. I wanted him to enjoy the rest of his life, so we found a nice home for him on a farm where he could go and graze and maybe be a riding horse. Six years after that, the aging athlete was on the market again, offered for sale to a good home where he could take life easier. But that's not where he went. It went from being a pampered racehorse, making his owner quite a bit of money, to being a hunter and jumper horse in Pennsylvania, still well cared for, to standing at a low end auction and no hope left. Sadly, this tale is all too common. From the beginning, Platinum Ticket was an extraordinary horse with an outstanding owner. I've been in the horse racing business in different aspects for about 16 years. I won the Eclipse Award as leading owner in North America uh, in 2000 and 2001. His trainer's credentials were just as impressive. I started training horses in 1994 and I was I've won about 800, close to 900 races. It was early in Ben's career that he met Platinum Ticket. In October of 2001, Mr. Engler and I claimed Platinum Ticket for 25000 at Colonial Downs in Virginia. Platinum Ticket won four races and placed in three. Uh, I remember he absolutely loved the grass. I remember he was, he was great on the dirt, too. He was a speedball. He just broke out of that gate, and he loved to do what he was bred to do. He loved to run. His last race was at Pimlico Racecourse in 2003. This was actually his best race that he'd ever run in. Uh, he actually won the race by three lengths that day and really ran a, a real nice race. Um, but then after that race, he was injured. Platinum Ticket damaged a suspensory ligament, and Richard Englander was faced with a tough decision, whether to rehab him or retire him from racing. I could have given the horse a year off, brought him back to the races, but with my experience, when you do that, the horses never come back the same, and I wanted him to enjoy the rest of his life. It was the turning point in the horse's career. We actually gave him away. I mean, we actually we do with most horses at the racetrack. When they get hurt, we try to find homes for them, and we do, and we do. We wait till we do find homes for them. Somebody usually takes them, especially a gray horse. So we, we found a home for him pretty quickly. If I'm not mistaken, an Englander gave her away to a girl. I can say, truthfully in my heart that I gave him to a good person that was going to take care of that horse. The girl was Tiffany Cobb. She and her mother Donna took care of Platinum Ticket and trained him successfully as a show jumper. By age 17 he couldn't jump as high so they placed an ad in horse clicks hoping to find him a retirement home. According to Donna, a man from Allentown, Pennsylvania offered to take him as a companion horse and she agreed. But Platinum Ticket didn't end up out at pasture. He ended up out of luck at the Knoxville Livestock Auction, where he caught the eye of Sonia Meadows, founder and executive director of Animals Angels. I would say the Knoxville Horse Auction is one of the worst in the entire country. I've been to hundreds of other horse auctions, but uh, the conditions of the horses and the treatment um, of the horses there at the sale um, is about the worst that I've seen. A lot of people treat horses like a, an item at auctions. You know, they don't look at them as a living being where they can suffer and they can feel pain and panic and fear. Most Americans react negatively towards slaughtering and eating horse meat. And yet, Americans are unaware of the terrible conditions horses encounter at auctions like the one in Knoxville. Sonia had visited Knoxville twice before and documented the ill treatment of horses there. She filed two separate complaints with animal control, one about a horse who was badly emaciated and another about a horse with severe injuries to its face, but she got no response. It's a familiar story to Nina Morgenson, executive director and investigator for Horse Haven, a Knoxville nonprofit. They rehab and rehome abused and neglected horses confiscated by law enforcement 
for the state of Tennessee. We have been getting a lot of calls to Horse Haven in regarding horses that come in in bad condition to the local auction houses. Um, all we can do as an organization is contact local officials, inform them of what's going on, and hope that the local officials will go up and investigate and maybe be able to do something. But if local officials failed the starving, sick, and injured horses in Knoxville, Sonia did not give up. I wrote the auction owner a letter and I listed all our findings and I recommended improvements to the sale. Recommendations were that the auction should not accept um, emaciated, uh, sick or injured horses. That would send a message uh, to the animal's owner um, to not bring animals like that anymore. I also made the recommendation that uh, all animals should have access to food and water at the sale. And um, that horses that were in significantly bad condition, that law enforcement should be notified in order to hold the owners accountable. But I never received a response. It is very difficult to establish a cruelty case. You need to establish a pattern. And you have to show it's not an isolated incident. It's happening over and over again. And um, that there is just a history of abuse and neglect. Brooke Farini, a longtime equine rescue and welfare investigator, has collaborated with Animal Control for over 12 years and knows the pitfalls. There has to be enough probable cause and enough evidence, a chain of, of evidence for that animal control officer to feel like that they have a successful chance of making a difference and, and, and seeing the law enforced. A former employee of the Knoxville Livestock Auction who agreed to be interviewed only if disguised puts her finger on what she believes is the root of the problem. We've created a monster um, and, and it's overbreeding. Undeterred, Sonia returned a third time in April of 2015, hoping conditions had changed for the better. We arrived in April at the sale and um, immediately again I noticed the conditions were unchanged. One pen in particular stood out to me. There was a group of uh, three horses in that pen and uh, the one horse was a gray thoroughbred gelding and he had this horrible wound on his forehead and the wound was highly infected um, his, his eyes looked feverish uh, and he had uh, pus coming out of um, his nostrils i don't know how that horse got that wound but i know that it looked like a gunshot wound and it was exactly in a spot where somebody would put a gun if he wanted to shoot a horse. The horse was Platinum Ticket, once a thoroughbred racehorse and a show horse. Now, in a kill pen at the Knoxville Livestock Auction, suffering with a bullet in his head. It remains a mystery why Platinum Ticket was shot and how he ended up in the horse slaughter pipeline. Looking for answers, Sonia immediately called animal control. So uh, law enforcement came and together we, we looked at the animals and um, five minutes later the owners of the horses showed up and um, confirmed that those were indeed their horses and that they had purchased them two weeks ago at the Knoxville sale and had left them in the pens for two weeks. I'm, I'm just up here picking them up. Yeah, we're just picking them up. And you're not taking my ID for them because I don't own them. I have nothing to do with them other than I rode up to transport them. But they were bought in this condition a week ago. And two, weeks ago. Two, weeks ago. two weeks ago. The last sale. And they had been charging us $320 for board for feed and hay and taking care of them. Who leaves a horse in that condition for two weeks in a pen area? The people who own the horses, they frequent the Knoxville auction. They buy between 30 and 60 horses every time they go there. How many horses you had on that truck? And Thir 32 on, uh, we bought 63, and all but five made it home. So there was 58 left. It's hard for me to swallow because anybody that is intelligent you know, and, and those horses would realize that he needed to be removed and treated immediately. 
our priority as a medical veterinarian and, and animal care is to take care of the suffering of the animal, take that horse immediately out of the problem. If that person of the auction should be in jail. Should not allow the horse to step in a stall without first call the authorities. They're not regulating how they're in pens. They're not regulating how they're transported. Some states have passed regulations. Tennessee hasn't. Um, so it becomes a neglectful trip all the way to the slaughterhouse. Well, um, the animal control officer was not really responsive. And she told me to stay back while um, she was going with the owner and his girlfriend to their car to look at some pictures. For the gray horse with the bullet in its head, it seemed like an open and shut case of animal cruelty. But was that enough for the Knox County Animal Control Officer to take action? So after about an hour, the Animal Control Officer came back to me and this time, uh, Frankie Byrne, the head of the animal control unit of the Knox County Sheriff's Office, is with her. What we're going to do is talk to the manager. I want to okay. know when this horse was injured okay. and what was done about it. Okay. Because she says he never called her. And I okay. said, well, he's basically responsible for your property yeah. while it's here. Because you can't leave horses like that for two weeks. Yeah. So. And, I mean, he's got an obligation yeah. to contact the owner and say, yeah. do you want me to try to yeah. treat it myself? Or do you yeah. want me to call a veterinarian and you yeah. pay for it? Yeah. But he just did nothing. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and okay. file another report on it and everything. Maybe okay. one of these days we'll nail him on something. Okay. And that comment startled me a bit because, and I responded, I said, well, if this is not enough evidence, what will ever be? The owners claim they had the horse's best interest in mind. Further, the cell barn was stuck with it and put them on our bills because we'll actually take up and turn them out. And I'm going to venture and say we're some of the only people dumb enough to do it, and now I know why they keep saying nobody will take the thin ones. Well, nobody wants to have to deal with animal control on either end. <laughs> There's money to be made at every step of this business. They make their living buying the most run-down animals for next to nothing, putting weight on them and selling them at another auction or to the slaughterhouse because they're worth more by the pound. There's one of the horses that costs $11. Mm -hmm. There's one horse that costs 71 one that costs 79 And I don't know what the other one is. She don't know which one the other one is. Using Platinum Ticket as an example, Jacob bought him for $11. Typically, they can sell him for meat at 48 cents a pound. Since a horse weighs around 1,000 pounds, that's $480. If they pick up 30 to 60 horses, they can earn between $12,000 to $24,000 for each trip. The auction in Knoxville occurs twice a month, so potentially Jacob can gross over a half million dollars a year. When a horse first enters that slaughter pipeline, so say his owner may have wanted him to be sold as a riding horse, but they needed that last $300 out of him. They took him, they auctioned him, they killed by her body. He puts him on his trailer. He doesn't go straight to a slaughter plant. He's usually gonna go through several more auctions before he ends up actually going to slaughter. And that process is hard on them. They go all over, they'll hit several auctions because these guys wanna make money. So if you can buy a fat horse in Knoxville, and sell it for more money in Cookville, why wouldn't you? Sonia couldn't forget about the gray gelding with the bullet in his head, so she did some research, and that's when she learned about his identity. I came across uh, Tara Sanders' Facebook page, and actually on April 29th, she posted a picture of the gray horse with the bullet wound in its head, and she also put a picture out there of the horse's tattoo number indicating it was a thoroughbred and that the horse's name was Platinum Ticket. Then Sonia started to unravel what happened after he left the Cobbs, supposedly for a retirement home. The horse was then, in December of 2014, owned by a Pennsylvania horse trader and his name is Bill House. We know that Bill House has a reputation of selling horses at New Holland Auction in Pennsylvania, which is frequented by several kill buyers. That was only a few months before Platinum Ticket wound up at the Knoxville Livestock Auction. If you only talk to rescuers, you get a different view. 
um, than you get when you talk to people who make their living working with animals. There's a difference. Um, and horses are livestock. The attitude of a kill buyer can be surmised by this short exchange between Tara and Gary Thompson, Jacob's father. I understand that y'all's viewpoint on slaughter. I get it. Mm-hmm. I was raised with a racehorse trainer as a dad. You, horses are just meant to love and treat. Gary, you grew up with a different mindset than me. What's a horse to you? It's business. Business. It's, yeah. They're livestock. To spread the word about conditions at the Knoxville auction, we reached out to a local TV station to help us confront the auction owners. And on the day of the sale, they sent a crew to meet us. I'm going to go ask for the Baileys, who are the managers here at the auction center in Knoxville. I'm going to ask them about these numerous complaints that have been filed against them for alleged animal cruelty, and I just want to get their response. If they have nothing to hide, they should be forthcoming. It's the people don't like it because they're selling slaughter horses, but what they don't understand is these horses are starving to death in these fields, and rather than them starve, you're not taping this. This is not going on camera. Ow. Ow. Citing threats of a lawsuit, the station chose not to air their story and tried to block us from using the video we shot of them. Nobody wants um, to be on the news. Nobody wants to be in a documentary. You know, they want to carry out their business and get on with their lives. For the kill pen horses, the auctions are just the beginning of their journey. They travel for days in unsafe, crowded conditions without food or water bound for slaughter plants in Canada and Mexico. The more horses a kill buyer transports, the more profit they make. I personally have witnessed at local auction houses transport vehicles, 18-wheelers, with um, bald tires, unsafe conditions, um, insides of trailers with jetting metal sticking out, unsafe for the animals. Um, and along with the fact that they're, they're all crammed in together, stallions and babies and mares, and they fight. And that makes for um, a public hazard because they're on our roads. And over the past couple years, we've had some local hill buyers that have actually had accidents on our interstate. And not only was it um, a shame that the animals got injured, but a lot of people could have been injured because of the unsafe conditions that they're transporting these animals in. On December 3rd, 2016, at 5 a.m., on a rainy Saturday morning on a farm road outside of Palestine, Texas, a trailer owned by Jacob Thompson went off the road, striking a tree and partially rolling, killing nine of the 14 horses being transported. As most of y'all know, we've had a truck accident that happened early Saturday morning. Because, you know, accidents happen. I hate it. Everybody here hates it. I mean, it's, it's a bad, bad, bad deal. Platinum Ticket's ride took him to the Louisiana feedlot of Tara Sanders and Jacob Thompson. And at this point, we can only guess his fate. I was called by a client to pick up two horses at the Thompsons and ended up at a kill pen that I was not aware it was a kill pen. These horses don't have any water. I have a picture of a trough with dirt in the bottom of it. And there's just carcasses laying everywhere. They don't even have the decency to bury them. They just leave them laying there for the buzzards. But they get barrel, good barrel horses and stuff, dressage horses, roping horses, cutting horses, and they just won't feed them. And they look good when they get them. How can you say, you know, you're giving horses second chances when they look worse after you get them than when you got them? There's no sense in starving a horse like they do. It's not any environment for any horse ever. Many kill buyers use social media to advertise the horses in their lot, playing on horse lovers to rescue them from the slaughter plant. This has become a profitable business for Tara and Jacob. And there's all these uh, rescue type people that then put them all over the internet and they want you to buy them off the kill buyer to get them out of the slaughter line. And these kill buyers are smart. They charge them way more than what they're worth at slaughter. And so it's become this almost uh, some sort of rescue to buy them out of the auction pipeline. But it, the kill buyers are just padding their pockets with it. And each horse they sell enables them to buy many more cheap horses who aren't as lucky. 
Those who work in the slaughter pipeline live in a dark world of secrets, lies, and deceit. And honest inquiries are met with untruths. Platinum ticket, I've never had that horse. You never had platinum ticket? Nope. You have a girlfriend though, Tara Sanders? Yep. And she, on her Facebook, she had platinum ticket. Um, we on, never, we, no, we never, that was a horse that come out of Opelousas. You remember that horse had a, a, a abscess yeah. on the head? Yeah, that horse, Stanley Brothers, out of Bastrop, Louisiana, bought that horse. Is that right? That's correct. Are you no. linked to the Stanley Brothers in Louisiana? No. no. Stanley Brothers from I'm Arkansas. A, they're from Arkansas. Well, they have the sheep lot in Bastrop, Louisiana. Yeah, but I don't do anything with Stanley Brothers. Tara claimed the Platinum Ticket was alive and well, but refused to allow the film crew to enter their property and take a picture of the horse and his tattoo. Using Facebook, she offers her explanations of Platinum Ticket's fate in reaction to the release of the documentary trailer. They released a movie called Platinum Ticket's Final Ride, and you know that I had Platinum Ticket here, and he stayed at your the place. He stayed at your mother's place till he died this winter, correct. and he died here. Correct. He was never shipped to slaughter. And once we got him here, we got him turned out, and he lived his life until this past winter. And when it got really cold, he got really neurological and he was starting to get really thin. And we just made the choice to have Dr. Horner euthanize him instead of letting him get really skin, like get really skinny and really sick. By the way, there's a special gray horse that has a lot of information online about him that's still sick. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, right over here, he's over there on the right. He has a whole movie dedicated to him. A whole movie dedicated to him, he's special. I finally just told people that we euthanized him so they would stop trying to buy him. People would call. And then they would be like, well, I want to buy him, and I'll offer you all. He's never going to be for sale. And his story should have never, ever been profited on. One thing's for certain. The last stop on the trip to hell are the slaughterhouses in Mexico and Canada. The way they kill these animals, the way they treat these animals before they're slaughtered is terrible. For those that have that prevailing attitude of who cares, these horses are at the bottom of the barrel, they're going to die anyways, you know, we need to change that by showing them really what these animals are suffering. And I mean showing them, getting them, getting it in front of their face and asking that question, are you okay with this? I think it's going to take a lot of public pressure. I think it's going to take thousands of phone calls of outraged citizens asking what's going on. Why are we not having any enforcement here? Why do these horses continue to suffer without consequences? As a horse owner, never sell a horse at an auction without carefully checking the credentials of the buyer. People need to be made aware to be very, very careful when they have an animal they're needing to replace because you don't know who's taking that animal and the chance of it ending up at a local auction house and then on a kill buyer's trailer heading to Mexico is really great. Once you sell your horse, you, you relinquish the, the control of what happens to your horse. You know, one of my biggest fears, and because I truly do care, is if I ever sell a horse, what's going to happen to them? I can write it in the contract, um, you know, safeguards. But if that horse ever loses value, they're going to be at risk for ending up like platinum ticket. Platinum Ticket, I think, is the best example, you know. He was so well cared for all the way up to last year, and then he got dumped at an auction and somebody very bad bought him, and now he's probably dead. Well, and it still breaks my heart thinking about him, because even when he stood there in the pen with all the neglect he had experienced, you know, all the bad things people had done to him, up to that point, you know, <clears throat> he still came up to me and nibbled on my shirt and tried to be close and tried to be petted. Um, yeah. Most Americans are appalled at the thought of selling horses by the pound and slaughtering them for their meat. That's why the slaughter pipeline is clogged with dirty secrets the kill buyers don't want you to know. Well, honestly, I didn't think people ate horses. I didn't even think that was even on the menu. You've got a lot of crappy people in these day and age that will do anything for money. I did not know this was happening, and if it is happening, it's a travesty, and I think we should do something about it. 
it's not something that you can change um, livestock owners' minds about. They, it's the price of doing business for them. Uh, but if the general public knew about it, then you might have some leverage with the, the livestock owners and sellers. To make a difference, we need to expose their secrets, make the public aware, and make the public vigilant to report cruelty to law enforcement and elected officials every time they witness it. If everybody would speak up and report animal cruelty when it happens, the world would be a much better place. No, I hope that they find the guy that, that was responsible, and I hope they lock him up and they throw the damn key away, you know? And I hope they find all the people that, that do atrocious things like this and they freaking put them behind bars and they throw the damn key away because it's just tremendous abuse, you know, to a helpless animal and it, there's just no, there's no room for it. There's no call for it. How can we allow for a horse like Platinum Ticket that has given his owner so much that has had a successful racing career, had a successful second career, you know, that has done nothing wrong in his life, always tried to please and to be a good horse for his owner. How can we sit back and allow cruelty to happen to such a majestic animal?